Richard from Sky Sports News. Go ahead, Richard. Cheers, Danny. Morning, David. How's things? Morning. Very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, obviously, it's been a, a successful series for you so far with the bat and for the team as well. How pleased are you, firstly, with your own personal form and, and secondly, with the way the team has played in tight situations against Australia? Yeah, re really pleased. Um, you know, when you get limited opportunities, you have to sort of uh, make full use of those. So to, to do that when you're under pressure is, um, you know, very satisfying. Um, it would have been nice to have been there at the end with Joss last night and to have won that game with him. But, um, you know, there's another opportunity in the next one. And, you know, the way we've approached this series has been fantastic. You know, the comeback the bowlers had in the first game to sort of steal a game for us. And then last night, um, especially batting second on that wicket, to, to do it that comprehensively and the way we played, uh, the positive way we played to actually take down that target um, was very pleasing. So it's good signs for us moving forward. And if you can reflect on the last 12 months uh, and the journey for you personally, because you, your stats certainly at, at this level in this format of the game stand comparison next to, to anyone in world cricket. So how tough has it been establishing yourself in the, the starting 11 for England? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been tough. I think we all know how good the players are that, that hold those positions. Um, you know, their records over the last four or five years have been fantastic. So for anyone to break in, you have to be extremely consistent and, and sort of uh, win games of cricket for England. Um, you know, so hopefully I've, I've sort of ticked a few boxes um, that Owen and, and the selectors and the coaches want. And, and um, hopefully I can keep building on this if I keep getting opportunities. We're obviously aware, I'm obviously aware that Guys like Jason and Stokesy will still come back in at some point. Um, you know, and it's my job to score as many runs as I can and the opportunities I have to put pressure on on them and, and uh, Morgs and the selectors um, when it comes down to it. And Ashton Agar this morning has spoken to us about the pride the Australians have in being the, the world T20 number one side at the moment. If you beat them in, in this third T20 game, then you take that. Is that something you guys as a group have discussed? Uh, I, it's been talked about loosely. I don't think we, we go into series to become the number one or number two or number three team, depending on where we're at. Um, our aim is to, to always just win every series we're playing and to win every game. And it's about finding ways to win those games. Um, you know, Owen always speaks about the way he wants us to play. Um, and as long as we keep playing those way or, or the way that he wants us to play against the specific opposition, um, you know, I think we're happy with that. But, you know, to be... If we do manage to win tomorrow um, and to put the Aussies under more pressure, um, it would be fantastic to finish number one. Just finally from me, we, we've heard this morning that Joss has been released from the bubble to go and visit his family for a couple of days. When he's on the field, though, and you're stood at, at the opposite end watching him bat, what's it like and how much easier does it make your job? Oh, best seat in the house. Um, you know, you're... You watch these guys on TV quite a lot, especially when you're not a regular um, and you see the ball striking capability of them. But when you're standing on the other end and you actually see how clean and how hard he hits the ball. I mean, he hit one back at, at, um, at Richardson yesterday. That was like an absolute trace of bullet. And, you know, I hardly saw it when I was, you know, maybe two or three yards out of the way from him. So I don't know how he uh, managed to get a hand on that. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's fantastic to be there and watch how guys go about their work and do their work. Um, you know, so even though I've, I'm 33 years old and I've played 200 games of, of cricket in 2020, you, you still watch and you're a little bit in awe of, of the way guys like that play. Thanks, David. Thank you. Uh, George from PA, please. Hi, David. Well played last night. Um, yeah, you've had huge success in, in T20 cricket over the last 12 months, especially. Um, a sort of theme that kind of keeps coming up is start slightly slowly um you know in some of your innings is that is that a tactic or is, or is that just playing the conditions uh, it's not a tactic you you obviously go out and you want to score as many runs as you can quickly you know my first i think my first three or four 2020s i actually got off to really good starts and then you know the lot the more you play especially when you're at three you bat in different positions you might come in the first over you might come in the fifth over you know, you might face a bowler in his second over that's in, in his rhythm. Um, you know, the goal is always obviously to score as quickly as you can. Um, you know, so it's not something in my game plan that I want to take five balls or ten balls. It's just, you know, sort of the way it happens. Um, you know, I, so there has been a lot of, written in the press about it. It's something I've spoken to Morgs about even before this series. And I said, look, if there's anything that you want me to do anything differently. And he was like, look, the way you play is exactly what we want you to play. You just keep doing what you're doing. So... You know, when the man that matters is Owen Morgan and if he's happy with 
you know the way I'm approaching it then you know that's sort of good enough for me at the at the moment but that doesn't mean I'm not trying to improve on that I'm always trying to improve and and be better so that I can keep um you know pushing a case to 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 be in the starting 11. Okay we will go with uh, Martin Smith. Yeah hi David um very Australian centric question this one um just regarding the Big Bash, have you or your management have any discussions with any Big Bash clubs about coming out uh, to play in that competition this this Australian summer? Uh, yeah, there has been some contact with with one of the the clubs. Um, you know, I think that's um, still ongoing at the moment. So um, hopefully we can finish and, and finalise that soon, and then and, and hopefully that can get announced. Just for just from afar, you've obviously. You know, would have watched would have watched the tournament. What's your impressions? And um, yeah, what are you what are you hoping to get out of that trip to Australia? Yeah, it looks a fantastic tournament. You know, it's it's something that especially in the winter you 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 really like to watch. It seems a very good product. Um, it's something that I've really wanted to be part of for a long time. Um, you know, so hopefully this can get finalised and I can get the opportunity to play in that. Um, you know, as a as a player, you want to play all over the world and in different leagues. You know, it's the only way you sort of improve your game and you. You learn different conditions, um, you know, so it would be a great learning opportunity for me to, to, to go out there, especially with, you know, there's a, a 2020 World Cup in two years' time, um, you know, so if I am performing well enough for England to still be part of that and get some good experience um, in the, the big bash, you know, I think that can only help. Don't suppose you want to tell us which what club it is, do you? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed yet, so I'm just going to sit on the fence with that one. Sorry. No worries. Thank you very much. Cheers, Martin. John Etheridge, please. Thank you, David. Um, uh, you averaged 15 T20 international cricket, strike rate of 150. I mean, uh, is it a source of some frustration that you're still kind of a, 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 a wouldn't say a fringe player, but perhaps not fully established in the side but with, with those sort of numbers? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a frustration. It's, it's, you know, we we as players that are on the fringe, we know how tough it is. We know how Owen runs the team, you know, he, to create a fearless environment, people need to be secure in their spots, um, you know, which is why when guys are injured, you know, sort of for a series like this, Morgs will tell you before the series that you're going to play three games, two games, one game, so there is no fear when you go out to bat. Um, you know, I want to be part of this 11. Um, you know, hopefully I can just keep scoring the runs and keep um, putting England in winning positions um, and put pressure on, on, on the selectors and morgues. You know, that's all I can do as a batsman. Um, getting frustrated is not going to help me or get me in the team. And with Joss missing tomorrow, would you expect Banton to go up to open? Okay. Uh, yeah, look, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm staying at three. I've been told I was batting three for the series, so um, I assume I'm staying at three. Um, and then, yeah, but most likely Banton will go up. But, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm not the captain. I don't want to get in trouble by uh, suddenly picking a team. So, uh I'll leave that to, to Owen to, to confirm. Well, just finally, um, uh, how's life at Yorkshire? Yeah, really good, actually. Um, really enjoyed it. Me and the wife, we, we bought a house. That, you know, we got the keys uh, just as lockdown started. So that was nice to, to move into that. Um, you know, we've really settled in nicely. Um, and yeah, really enjoying it. There's a bit more space up there. Cheers, John. Lauren Spooth, please. Hi, David. Just, just following on from, from John's first question, um, I think you average more than anyone in the history of T20 international cricket, including Virat Kohli by 0.06 of a run or something like that. Um, given that, um, does the fact that you don't yet fully consider yourself, from what you've just said, a, an absolute nailed-on player in the starting eleven, does that kind of thing keep you on your toes each time? And is that actually quite a productive thing, both for you and the team? It is, you know, the, the type of player I am, I quite like to, to know where I stand, um, sort of in, in, in the, the team setup as such, which is why I said when you get played in a series, you know exactly what you're going to do more because does that really, really well, um, giving you that freedom and, and taking all the fear away. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm anywhere near as good as Virat Kohli and those guys, even though the numbers are sort of suggesting that, you know, maybe if I play 50 games, I can sort of be compared to some extent. But, um, you know, all I can do is score runs. That's that's as simple as it is. If if I keep scoring runs at the rate I'm scoring at them at, um, you know, hopefully it, it will make them make it hard for them to ignore what I'm doing and, and I can sort of somehow find a way into that starting eleven. 
Thanks. Chris Stocks, please. Hi, David. Um, similar theme to John and Lawrence's questions. When you have these conversations with, with Owen, are you under the impression that you're kind of integral to the plans that England have heading into that next World Cup in India next year? Uh, look, the, the way it's run here, you, you, they never talk about it being too far away, ahead. They always look to plan. So, you know, you, you'll plan, you're playing conditions that will suit and, and game plans that will potentially suit the 2020 World Cup in, in India, which is why I think we're playing on the same on used wickets here, because that will be what, you know, India potentially will be if the wickets aren't, aren't very good. Um, but, you know, we, especially if you're not contracted, you, you never really know if you're in or out of the team, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing that, you know, that just makes sure that when you do get your opportunity, you, 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 you try and take the most of it. Do you think, talking about contracts, you, you put yourself in a good position now to maybe get a white ball one when they're awarded at the end of this summer? Oh, I hope so, but um, you know that's the decision made from people above my pay grade. You know, if I get the call, then I'll take it, and if I don't get the call, then you know nothing changes really. Okay, last question, Matt Robert, please. Uh, hi, David. Um, just on that next T Twenty World Cup in India, um, you've obviously played lots of franchise tournaments over the past couple of years, and you know some tough pitches in Bangladesh, for example. Do you feel like those the learnings against spin from those tournaments stand you in good stead for for India? Yeah, it does. Obviously, you know, I have no idea if I'll be part of that World Cup squad. I obviously would like to be, but there's a long way to go from there. Um, you know, I think the it's undervalued um, how important these tournaments actually are to a player's development. You know, you as you said there, you you go to Bangladesh and you could play on a wicket that's a 200 wicket on on the Monday, on the Tuesday, it's 120 wicket um, wins the game. So it's you know you're you're consistently learning how to adapt and read conditions. Um, you know, which I think is is one of my strengths in 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 2020 cricket is that I can assess situations pretty quickly and when to go, when to sit back, um, you know. And it's a good learning curve uh, going out there. So you know, if if I'm lucky enough to play well enough over the next year and somehow get into that 2020 World Cup squad, then I hope that experience that I've had from playing in tournaments will put me in good stead. And just just on domestic cricket, um, both in the blast after this series and during the winter, is there any thought you might sort of drop into the middle order to try and prove a point about your adaptability or do you think top three is very much your routine? Yeah, it's something I spoke to Owen about, actually. I spoke to him about that in the South African series and, you know, Owen's answer to me was, you know, if you drop down to five and you play county cricket and you don't score runs, there's not there's a potential that you won't get re-picked in the England squad because it's obviously picked on form and who's doing well as well. You know, so he said, you know, that's your choice if you want to take a year out or, uh, doing something that's totally out of your comfort zone, but then will potentially risk you getting picked for England in the future. Um, you know, and he, his words were just, if you keep doing what you're doing and you keep improving, there's no reason why you can't potentially still slot in those positions, even though they see me as a, as a top three batter at the moment or top four, because I batted four in South Africa. Cheers. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a good day. Cheers. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, David. Cheers, guys.